Hey everyone, my name is Mike Aubrey. I'm one of the evangelists on the Fusion 360 team. And that's me in the left, if you didn't know what I looked like already. This is my friend Jamie and my friend Grant. And the point of this video actually isn't to talk about our hiking trip, it's to talk about how you would create something like this tent in Fusion. And uh, we use lofting, that's what the, the feature is called. And we've had a lot of questions lately actually on our product forms. And then just individual one-on-one -on -one interactions, I found there's a lot of questions that, that are surrounding best practices of how to use lofting. And then just some general questions of how to even set up lofting in Fusion. Because there's actually a fair amount of experience within our community with people who are very familiar with lofting, just not with how to do it with, uh, with Infusion. So the purpose of this video is to just run you through a couple of examples. The first one being this, this simple tent example. Uh, the next one being uh, this variable profile shape, uh, kind of a squarish top and a rectangle shop and right, roundish bottom of this ring. And uh, this whiskey bottle, which is a, a very classic profile based loft. And through these examples, I want to show you just kind of the different types of lofting you can do with Infusion. And also along the way, hopefully show you a couple of best practices of how I've been successful using lofting with Infusion. So with that, let's get started, and we'll start actually with this whiskey bottle uh, to begin with, because this is a really, uh, a really classic uh, profile-based loft that's set up here, and I think it's a great place to start for you if you've uh, if you haven't seen lofting before, or if you you have and you're just looking for some maybe some interesting ways to set up your loft for your for your projects. So at its core, what lofting is, is it takes two different profiles and comes up with the geometry it would take to create a solid uh, to um, resolve between those two profiles. So let's take a look at lofting. If you go and you just choose loft, um, the most simple way is to create a series of profiles like this. I've created these different circles and rectangles in a line. You just go and you just start choosing them. So I just choose this first profile, second profile, and just start working your way in the order you want to, to terminate them in. So we can say one, two, three, four. We just keep working our way down here. I'll just keep selecting them and it, your shape will start to evolve. So this first shape we've created here, which is a series of circles, that's something you could create with a, a revolve. But going from a circle to a rectangle, this right here, this type of crazy shape, that is at the core what lofting can get you. And uh, you can see, yeah, we can create a really gnarly looking shape here really quickly uh, just with a series of profiles. That's um, Yeah, that, that's, that's a classic loft you're looking at there. And the order you select the matters, and that's why I went kind of top to bottom. You can actually, if you're going to go, you can, if you change the order that these things terminate, they might have some trouble. I, I won't go into that, but just telling you the order matters. And that's our, that's our loft. So how did I create these profiles to begin with? I want to show share with you, um, I think what I think is a best practice for me anyway, is that I set up, each of these sketches are on their own planes. So like if I go and if I should just click on this, this top level guy, right here I can hover over them you can see highlights that's linked to this plane number seven and I can see that by hovering over it and I also know that if I click on this guy it's right here on the timeline you can see how that guy turned turn uh, get, got darkened and and this is a, this is a way that you can find where things are but I've actually found that a faster way for me um, with these types of uh, of lofts to set up my model is rather than having to worry about where the planes are and how they're they're set up and just series creating just a series of offset planes like this you're kind of just saying hey one's always going to be 10 millimeters above it um, that's fine but you have to have to remember where they are and you have to do this little dance with the timeline every time you'd want to maybe go and edit it so a faster way for me to keep track of my different planes is actually I just link them all up to a common sketch so check this out I have all of these planes linked up so that I can just kind of quickly move these around on my on my sketch. Move them up. There we go. And let me show you how I set that up. So the way I did this is I have this top level guy. And by the way, I should really call this like a I call this like a skeleton, like a profile skeleton, because it's it's providing basically the backbone to my entire model. So I, I like naming sketches that I'm going to be using or editing later and uh, if I go and I go into this guy all I do is that I just create a sketch with a couple of lines so like this guy uh, no hold on, this guy and then I go and instead of using that offset plane I actually do a plane at angle I'll click this angle right here and I'll just make it 90 or whatever you want, you can do. It doesn't have to be 90. Just in this case, it made sense to make it a 90, and then you have something that's linked to a sketch. 
And again, you can do the same thing with the offset, uh, but I just think this is a lot cleaner because it helps me keep things uh, visual as opposed to just organized. But moving on, let me let me show you uh, go to next level on on, on profiles and uh, and add add another element to to your lofting. And uh, actually, let's not do the ten yet. Let's do this ring. So here's another example of of using a using two profiles. So here's just sort of a rectangle and then the bottom is a circle, but you can't create a loft from here to there directly because it's, it's, an, it's infinitely thin. We actually need to assign a direction that we want the loft to execute. And let me show you how to set up a guide rail. And so along with it, I'll show you another best practice of how to set up stuff. Let's uh, just make it, I'm gonna use um, projected points to reference my profiles to my guiding rail. Actually, it's not a rail, it's a center point. So I'm going to start off, actually, instead of creating my profiles, I'm going to create the path that I want to create. Because this is important for a ring, because you want to make sure you're precise about where your, uh, what your inner diameter is for, to make sure the finger can properly fit into the ring. So here's my inner diameter for my ring, and that's going to be my path. Very cool. And now if I stop my sketch... Actually, I'm going to need to give it a... Uh, uh, I want to give it a diameter as well. Oh, I did give it a diameter. Good, good, good. Okay. And now I am going to uh, create a sketch on this uh, perpendicular to it, and I will reference in, I'll intersect, actually, that those the, the one cir circle through the new sketch. So those are going to be the intersection points. And then I'll start uh, creating a uh, a nice shape to to link to. So here we'll just create our quick little rectangle and I'm gonna make a, actually a midpoint to this point right here so as the thing will update it'll update symmetrically and we'll give it a dimension say this maybe two we'll call this I don't know, three or so very cool actually I should have uh, let, me, let me give a uh, let me give the, the fillets here. Let's go, we have 0.4, I like you. I'll actually re right click, repeat the command. 0.4, and actually, let's make them so they're all linked. So this guy is actually D4 is the value. So actually, I'm gonna make this guy D4 as well. So that these guys are gonna be, all these will be linked up. This guy will be D4 as well. And D4, excellent. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and put those dimensions back. Uh, two, and then we'll go from here to here. Call us three, good enough. Okay, and I will finish up by making a quick little circle here, a little two point. Maybe go from U to U. Actually, I think I want, because I want this guy to update well, I'm going to give this guy just a call it a construction line so that when it updates, it'll stay on top of this guy instead of trying to go back below it. Call this guy three. Very cool. And there's our shape. So let's uh, I'll show you. So um, the reason why I did this is if I go and update this later, these profiles will stay together. But let's make the loft real, real quick and uh, just show you how you'd set this thing up. So if I go, say, profile to profile, it's going to fail. Makes sense because it can't go do something of infinite thinness. Now let's give it a, a path. And this guy will give a failure too, but that's okay. Because what it is is it's trying to treat it as a rail. And it can't, oh, we'll show you rails in a second. Basically right now there's no rail because there's nothing to, to rail against. So what actually what all it needs right now is a, is a path. And that's what these center lines do. If you call it a center line, well, then it's telling you like, oh no, take this guy and move it along that path until you get to your your destination. And there's your that's a really cool looking loft. I mean that's a really funky shape. And we'll uh, call it up next if I go closed. I think even one better. If you go closed, it'll actually close itself up and go both sides. So there we are. Um so why do we do this so it was linked? Well I'll check it out. So if we go and we make this guy bigger. Maybe make it a 19 or something. Yeah, you can do that. No big deal. Just it'll update. 
Um, maybe we'll make it so you guys can see this. Maybe make a more cosmetic update. Uh, there we are. <laughs> Move this thing back and forth. Yeah, so we got this guy linked. I should go back and actually connect that to center point to make it sure it's um, symmetric. Actually, let's just do that. The reason why I was doing that is because I didn't tell it to stay on. I want you to be vertical with this guy. And I want you. There we are. <laughs> and now we can't move there anyway. All right, now so now this guy's locked down. Nice looking loft. Uh, let's move on to the next example. Let's talk about the tent. So we've talked so far. We've talked about just basic profiles to create lofts. We've talked about making a, a, a profiles using a, a center line or basically a guiding path for where a loft will move. And we've talked about open versus closed and what that looks like. Uh, let's talk about how to make this funky shape. Let's push it back. And the way to do this is I've actually created a, just a base, and then I'm, I've given it actually some guiding rails to make this happen. And so one of the things you'll notice real fast out of this is that I have one profile, but I don't have a second profile to go to. And that's OK, because Fusion supports actually going to a point just as well as it supports going to a profile. So that's what we're doing right here. And what you see here is that point is it's trying to go as fast as it can to the termination point, so you get this kind of this, this pyramid effect. And so this is a great example where we can use rails now instead of a, um, a path. So if I go and just choose, choose this side, this side uh, rail right here, I'll choose this guy and you can see that it'll, and now it's able to control, it'll hold that rail and create a different shape. Now if I go and I just kind of keep clicking them, you'll notice that it, 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 I'm using the same selecting mechanism as I did for profiles. What it is is it's inferring what it needs to be. And so is I will, next thing I choose, it's already on rails, it'll try and make another rail, but notice that I have chain selection on. So if I choose this while this chain is going on there, it's going to become self-intersecting, and it's, going to, it's not going to look right. Actually, just to show you what it looks like, I'll click it. You can see it's not going to work. So if it doesn't work, and it won't, don't fret, don't fret, um, unclick it. Oh, it's all good. And instead, turn off the chain select. And actually, one step, you'll see another thing appear is it'll say, can you also merge the edges? And we don't want it to merge edges. We want it to be just its own standalone rail. So turn it off. And then try this guy now. And you'll see that this tent will start to uh, start to adhere to the, uh, the boundaries we want it to, to go to. So it's still on rails. Very good. And we're, uh, there we are. We've got a pretty gnarly looking tent. And again, this is awesome because we now have this stuff linked back to a, a sketch and it'll update. So, like, if I go and, you know, maybe move this guy around, you can move it over a little bit. Yeah, then the, uh, the loft will update. So, that's one way to, to create this type of a shape. Let me show you another way. To get after this, because guide rails, guide rails are really powerful when you know precisely where you want to go. Uh, they can be a bit tedious, because what I've done to set up this one, you can see, is I actually went and I referenced again my where I was going to. I had this side profile, I had this point, and so I actually I created a sketch and I I projected those points and then then linked them to my rail. That's a uh, that's definitely a best practice, but it, it can be kind of tedious. Let me show you another way. If you're creating something like this, maybe a faster way to go would be instead to just go ahead and use this, you know, go to the point, but then maybe use point tangency instead. Let me check this guy out. What point tangency does is rather than going the fastest way to terminate, is it's actually saying vamp down the loft so that it'll maintain a tangency to the profile to the to the the plane that that point was was placed on. And so that's what you're seeing here. Everything just just moves its slope down to zero. And it's also doing it at a, a certain rate. So actually, let me show you this little arrow here. And make sure you have, if you're going to try this, turn off the incremental move, because if you have incremental tur move on, turned on, it'll be, uh, it'll be too much. If I go and I just start pulling on this guy, you can see you can make it so you can, how, how quickly it vamps itself down as well. And there's a, there is a, a scalar value that goes with it. And it's actually subject to what the original units were. And when I first created this part, I had it in millimeters. So actually, if it's 10 millimeters, that's actually the the normal condition. The the like 
the equivalent of like some some scalars we have within fusion are zero to one this actually starts at 10. so if i had started in feet it would have been 10 feet but since i started in millimeters is 10 millimeters um, if i go if i go higher than 10 millimeters if i go to something like uh, 15 that's actually the 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 fat case the convex case if you go to something like five you'll see it'll go concave underneath and so you know it resolves itself very quickly so you can get yourself something pretty close and actually maybe a lot smoother looking parabola because I just kind of eyeballed these these splines and whereas this guy's got a nice little you know vamp down parabola equation going with it that's probably the better way to do this this piece so I, I got this guy and I got a nice looking nice looking loft okay so I've shown you three examples using the solid modeling environment and let me show you some stuff of uh, <laughs> some stuff using lofts in the sculpted modeling environment. Uh, you know, a lot of us that have come through the Inventor and SolidWorks world, we know how powerful solid lofting can be. But a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of us that made the switch actually said, well, you know, that said, uh, solid lofting is really kind of a pain in the butt. Um, is there a is there a better way to do it so we can get all the f extreme flexibility of uh, of sculpting? And the answer is yes, you can. Just do a loft within the sculpting environment. So the same functionality exists. So if I go and I do this loft, actually if I go from you know here to here, just use the same pr same setup as you did before. This will fail, and then I'll choose this guy as being a um, use this as a as a center line. There we go. And actually, if we can close it, so all the same tools exist for you. It's just that you have the added um, control of being able to choose how you want your T spline surfaces or your, we'll just call them your, your, your sculpted bodies, to form. So actually with this guy, I can go with, let's see, we can go with two. Oh, I can't hold it. Okay. You can see that I'm adding detail uh, based on what I've, uh, based on what it can hold. And so uniform, the difference between uniform and curvature is uniform keeps equal spacing between each of these lines. You can see a line here, a line here, one, two, three, four, because that's how many I've dictated. And it'll do four across for each of those profiles. So actually maybe if we go down, so actually probably maybe eight probably makes more sense because it'll go eight here. It'll be uniform. Whereas if I go with the curvature, you can see it'll actually tell basically what it needs to actually truly hold the curvature. That's a lot of, that's a lot of T-spline shapes though. So actually I'm going to go with uniform. And I think eight will work about right. And let's see if I can, can I put this thing down and maybe two will work? Yeah. So one, two across each of these lines. So one, too. And there we go. I've got myself a really nice looking, nice looking uh, um, sculpted body. I'll just turn on this guy that I can then go and I can take advantage of for all my. Actually, there we go. You. I want just these guys. I can. Uh, actually, we have. Oh, that's the next thing we got to play around with. So it's it looks it looks like it's in a great state, but actually, if you uh, you try this guy out, you can see that some of them may or may not be connected. See this guy? There's a little hole in there. Yeah. So we might have to go in and uh, stitch them up. And for those of you who've used a product like Alias or Rhino, this will be familiar to you. If you're coming from like SolidWorks or Inventor. You might that might be a little foreign to you, but fortunately, take heart. It's actually quite easy. Um, all we need to do is we just need to stitch them up. There. Right, so what I'm going to do is that we need to just make sure that we merge all the adjacent vertices together. So this is actually really easy. Just try it. Uh, go to merge your or weld vertices. Choose weld to tolerance, and then just window the whole thing. And basically everything, every point that's going to be close within this tolerance will merge itself together. And now you have one, one body as opposed to the many bodies. And you can do some cool things like, uh, you know, start, you know, the stuff that you like doing in T-splines, you know, kind of move things around, pick edges, move it around. And you know, so if you are, if you already kind of think in terms of lofting, like profiles and rails, but you want to have the flexibility of T-splines, uh, a loft is a great way to get you started. Uh, and we'll probably yeah let's let's leave it at that. I think this this video is probably getting a little long. Uh, if you guys got questions, shoot me uh, shoot me a message in the comment board. And I hope this was super useful, uh, showing you some different ways you can set up and take advantage of lofting, along with a couple of best practices along the way. Take care. Bye.